Hey, rich friends, it's your girl Cha Cha reporting live from The Money Mantra, and we are back with another Forex education video. I do want to welcome everybody to my channel, whether this is your first time or you are returning. Thank you for rocking out with me and for really investing into your education. Like, this is going to be one of the most important things that you can learn if you do want to understand financial markets and turn your situation around. So, I created this channel to help as many people as possible become independent and profitable traders, specifically within the foreign exchange market. But you can apply this same chart analysis to the stock market, to futures, to indices, cryptocurrency, or whatever you really want to trade. So again, just thank you guys for rocking out with me. And I hope that this channel really helps you reach your financial literacy and financial education goals. Now, I've been trading for about four years myself, but... I did launch an e-learning platform that simplifies day trading for everyday people just like yourself. Because I didn't really have a mentor and people teaching me this, I really wanted to break down the information in the way that I wish I would have been taught. So it's a pretty cool program. It's uh, about 99% self-guided and it's a structured learning environment. However, I do have live sessions every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. So you can get those questions answered, interact with me and other students. So if you're interested in having a personal mentor and being in a trading community in a structured learning environment, you can definitely register for personal mentorship down below and the information is in my description box. So in today's quick video, we're going to be doing a trade breakdown, which is pretty much where I break down a trade that I took um, or gave to my students who I'm currently teaching. As we can see, this trade was posted on March 24th, 2024. And it was for a sell limit. Now, the reason why I chose sell limit, you can't really see the rest of this chart, but I am going to break it down once we get into trading view. So as we can see here, this was for a sell limit, not market execution at all. And I gave them a potential entry point at 19105. I also have, I'm trying to get out of the hop habit of providing stop losses simply so that my students can practice more and get comfortable identifying highs and lows in the market. However, I do recommend about a 50 pip minimum stop loss on JPY pairs because they do move so fast. So my first take profit was around 191.13 and my second take profit was around 189.54. Again, I always encourage my students to do their own analysis, use proper risk management, and to make sure that they check the news so that their trades are working out best for them. So I actually went back to trading view and I already put my chart in I already put my chart in replay mode so that we can go ahead and see what happened. Now I did post this trade around March 24th at 9 p.m. So I'm just going to go to that part of the chart so we can see what I was looking at when I decided to drop this trade idea. So as we can see, we're right back um, on, oh, you know, that's September 17th, guys. Let me get to the 24th for us because that's the day that this trade was dropped. So we're going to go to... Sunday. March 24th at 9 o'clock p.m., which is about right there. Now, I love the replay feature on TradingView. If it's something you like, you would have to upgrade to premium. But other than that, it's pretty cool, especially when you're doing your back testing. So first and foremost, the first thing I noticed was that the market seemed to already be in a previous resistance zone or a previous supply zone. Now, the market pretty much works in these ebbs and flows where you'll see that it'll be going up which means price is going higher. Once it reaches a certain price, it'll start to come back down and then it'll go back up and then it'll come back down. But what you'll notice is that the price is consistently revisiting the same levels. So as we can see, the market came up to here and then sold. It came back to the same area hours later because this is the four hour chart and then it sold from the same place. So when I was looking at this, although I did see some wicks here, I did see that the candles had already rejected off of that previous resistance zone. So I assumed that it would continue to sell and do the same thing that it's done before, right? So I recommended setting a sell limit in the same previous area where it sold before. And I wanted to sell back down to a previous support or demand zone, which is why I put set your TPs in this area, 
between 18954 and 19013, as I just showed you guys from Telegram. Now, another thing that I noticed was that my stochastic was already facing down, and I do have my percentages here, so it was also below 20, which for me were selling confirmations. What you'll notice is that when the stochastic is facing up, the market will be mirroring that or the stochastic mirrors the market and it'll also be going up versus when the stochastic is facing down. That's usually a reflection that the market is going to be dropping down as well. So I had a few of these confirmations for a sell. I didn't want to get in for market execution because I did notice this demand area here. Now, when you see wicks at the bottom of price action, this usually lets you know that the market is going to go up. And when you see wicks at the top, this usually lets you know that the market is going to go down. So it could be that I overlooked this step, but we are going to go ahead and play this out to see what actually happened in this trade. And I'll break it down like a sports replay as we're watching. So as we can see, the candles actually did tap back into our supply zone and it hit our entry point, which was at 19105. Now, the market started to come back down with every single candle, but then we can see that new levels of support were actually being built. Now, once the market had returned to my demand zone, which I highlighted previously, that should have been a sign to me that, okay, maybe this trade is going to buy, but I really just wanted to hold and not fold and have some patience with this trade because... I can see that the market really did want to um, drop down. However, as we can see, the market is currently dropping down. But at the time when I dropped this trade, we can see that it went up. My stop loss was most likely lower than this because my trade definitely hit stop loss. However, we can see that the market is revisiting that same previous sell zone, right? This entire red area is the supply and it's currently coming back down. So if I gave this trade idea to somebody and they monitored the trade or adjusted their stop loss as the market went on, this trade would not quite be in profit yet. However, it does look like it's coming back down. So if you're watching this video now, you may want to look at GBP, JPY, and you may want to reassess a few things and see what's really going on because the markets are constantly changing and I'm not always correct. So I'm okay with that. So although this trade was a loss for me, um, somebody in this trade is profitable now, especially if they had a higher entry point. But that's really all I have for you guys today. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that this was clear. If you want to see more videos like this, you can watch my Real Wins and Losses playlist, which I do review the bulk of my trades when I have the time to do so. And again, if you guys are looking for a mentor, you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one to get better trading results, no matter what you're trading, you can register below the personal mentorship and the information is in my description box. So that's all I have for you guys today. Until next time, rich friends.